Hello, good afternoon, and good morrow, everybody. Today we are doing the Open Search Community Meeting, and I actually have to specify that because there are so many other public meetings happening now, which is the super coolest. I will be your host, David, uh, the MC, um, not MC Escher. Uh, just a heads up, these meetings are recorded. We've got some etiquette stuff. Introduce yourself before speaking. Generally, don't be rude. Um, and yeah, uh, let's not talk over the speaker. If you have a question, drop it in chat or save it. We'll have a Q&A section at the very end. Uh, we got a couple announcements. Number one, uh, thank you all for, if you submitted a CFP, if you didn't submit a CFP, um, we had 116 proposals submitted for Open Search Con 2023. So like, that was awesome. I'm so, I'm so excited. There's so much good stuff. So those are getting uh, rated, ranked, and reviewed right now. And then we should be releasing an agenda here shortly. But you can register um, right now on our Splash That page. So please register as far in advance as you can. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you all there. We do have Slack if you haven't seen. Uh, we'll post the link. Yep, Chris has got links today. Um, also, there are a bunch of interesting uh, RFCs that are open right now. We have a public release process. So Open Search is going to be releasing in public, coming very shortly, just the same way that we've got like the security triage meetings, other uh, developer meetings happening in public. Release meetings are going to be public here shortly. And there's a proposal there. Um, Nick Nees made uh, splitting up the server. So we're looking to split out some of the backend processes on open search. And uh, there's a really great RFC there that's had a lot of um, traction so far. Um, we've also got an RFC open for centralizing job identity management. So right now jobs don't necessarily have identities. They're just the identity of that server instance. So um, we're looking to have some identity management in there. Um, really cool in there. And you know what, I'm going to just drop the last one because I think we might just be talking about something like that today. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to our wonderful guests today to talk about the future vision of open search dashboards. I'm like really, really, really excited about this. Um, I think everyone else will. So Krush, Kevin, and the UX and dashboards teams kick it off. I'm going to jump on real quick just to intro Krush and Kevin and kind of what we're working on. Um, really quickly, I just want to go over sort of how we're thinking about dash, what we're calling dashboards reimagined and the goals associated with it. So feel free to check out the RFC. There'll be a, um, we'll provide a link, uh, but I think it was on David's last slide. Um, but really what we're focused on is some key things. So organization and collaboration. So how to make it easier for users to share, collaborate, and organize their work. Um, usability, so allowing users to gain insights rapidly and accurately with minimal information overload. So putting the right information with the right fidelity at the right time in open search dashboards. Uh, extensibility, so making it easier to contribute to the project by building the platform of tools to facilitate extending that functionality uh, and enriching the user experience with the ability to extend functionality. And then we're also focused on making dashboards more intuitive. So how can we make it easier to reason about things and understand how things are organized uh, without having to be a power user? Uh, differentiation, so differentiating open search dashboards uh, from other tools and sort of starting to more establish a clear brand identity that's unique. Uh, and then customization. So we want to make it easier for our users to customize, um, maybe without even contributing, but rather have customizations right there in dashboards that users can make uh, and rebrand the application as they'd like to use. And with that, I'll kick it off to Kevin and Cruz, who will walk us through uh, some of the changes. And we're excited to hear you guys' feedback. Thanks. I'm Cruz. I'm a senior UX designer on OpenSearch, leading the uh, efforts for our design system and our component library OUI. Um, and what you're going to see today is kind of our, our North Star vision for uh, our design system, our component library, as well as the product itself. Um, Kevin, do you want to take a moment to introduce yourself? 
Yeah, um, I'm Kevin Garcia. Um, I am the UX manager. So I manage the team of UX designers here um, at OpenSearch, uh, specifically focusing on uh, the open source product and the evolution of it. Um, and I'm really excited for the work that Kurish is going to share with us today. Um, so thank you, Kurish, for putting it together and looking forward to uh, getting started with it. Awesome. So um, first and foremost, you'll notice it's a pretty drastic color change from where we're at today. Um, we have been primarily exploring in dark mode um, to really make sure that we're honing that experience in uh, to deliver like a big refresh to our dark mode and um, kind of changing a lot of the branding uh, or changing towards aligning closer to our branding. Um, so you'll see a whole new set of uh, fonts and iconography uh, coming to the platform. Um, our iconography is very much a work in progress. Uh, so if you see anything that's a little funky, that would be why. <laughs> um, and we're really starting to try to create more uh, specific status driven iconography as well and really excited to um, start uh, communicating more um, visually uh, instead of having labels everywhere. <laughs> um, so on our homepage, we're sort of re-envisioning um, a lot more uh, coaching for the end user, um, especially on a first time user experience um, or uh, as the experience, sorry, as people start to customize their spaces, uh, making our landing experiences really specific to our end users beyond just our admins. Um, so providing a lot more context and a lot more jumping off points into, uh, into the application itself. Um, you'll notice that we have quite a few new features on our left side uh, navigation, um, the main one being projects. And we're introducing projects as a way to organize all of your dashboard objects and provide like a collaborative uh, space um, to work together. Um, Kevin, is there anything on the homepage strategy you want to add to? Yeah, one one thing that has come out of a lot of the interviews that we've been doing is that while this is a really good like first time view, a lot of our power users and a lot of our users that keep, keep coming back to this homepage actually want to customize it. They might want to get like hide the getting started uh, card. They might want to hide some of the learn more content. They might want to introduce uh, what are your recent alerts, uh, alerts or alarms, or what are recent dashboards that we've been looking at. So part of what we want to do with our homepage, as well as our like project landing pages, is provide a, a place uh, where users can actually like rearrange all of this content. You should be able to move the sections up or down. You should be able to add like any embeddables from your dashboards or from any other parts of the application so that as you continue to use this frequently and over time, uh, it's going to become more and more personalized and more and more relevant to like the tasks that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can kind of think of the homepage as sort of a dashboard in a way. Um, and we really do want people to be able to add new sections to their homepage and uh, and be able to put really any embeddable on the, on the homepage as well. Um, I'd like to take a minute to visit um, some of our other nav concepts. We have introduced uh, a reduced amount of navigation, um, really kind of focusing on the left nav at the moment with a sticky actions bar. And you'll see actions bars become more uh, prominent across the product. Um, we have a lot of, our current product has a lot of tables, a lot of actions related to that table data. Um, and we think that we can start to integrate action bars uh, more contextually um, and uh, making a lot more things available at your fingertips. Um, so uh, just walking through that, we have um, a customizable action bar. So you may out of the box have some defaults like favorites, alerts, your uh, user controls, dev tools, search and help. Um, and uh, ideally you would be able to switch some of those in and out um, if some of them are not, uh, alerts may not be relevant to all of your end users, for example. Um, favorites, uh, we're really excited about the concept of favorites, really helping people jump into projects or specific objects like a visualization or a notebook 
or a saved search. Um, so things that are used really often. Um, alerts, technically it doesn't, uh, dashboards is not technically a channel in our notifications today, um, but we're kind of toying with that idea and, and trying to figure out how to surface up uh, in application alerts um, in addition to um, the external alerts that you may be sending to your Slack channels and, and things like that. Um, really want to start to create more of an, uh, an environment where the user has more control over their UI um, and giving like really easy shortcuts such as like turning on and off dark mode to light mode or setting it to your system settings. Um, being able to jump into your user settings versus the application settings is also something that we're focused on uh, at launch of these new features. We've also started to play a lot with context and context switching. Um, and we really wanted to start to explore the ability to open dev tools globally. Um, so no matter what your context is, you would have access here um, and it could potentially overlay your experience. Um, so if you were uh, kind of interacting with the UI and you wanted to do something in CLI instead, you could really quickly uh, uh, open that up. And this will become really handy in things like um, dashboards um, or uh, other discover tool uh, type um, applications. Um, one thing that we don't have today is site search um, or app, sorry, application search and really excited to start exploring that. Um, it's really intended at this point, we're exploring it um, as a way to search all of your dashboard objects. Um, and instead of kind of taking you out of the context of where you are, and that's kind of the, 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 the key thing to remember here is we really want to keep people in their context until they really click into another experience to switch, because um, it might be useful to search for your objects while looking at a dashboard and saying, oh, do I, I don't remember if I created that, I'll search for it, or where did that thing go that I created yesterday? I know I can't remember. So um, being able to provide uh, the search results in a pushover flyout um, related to the screen um, might be really helpful. So just something we're kind of exploring here. And then the same with uh, documentation. So we really want to get to a place where our documentation doesn't necessarily live in the application, but is referenced by the application. And we want to be able to contextually um, provide you that documentation. So as you move around the application, um, if you're in a project, or a dashboard, we may be able to serve you up uh, dashboard specific popular help topics. Um, and then also providing an inroad to searching documentation from the application. So you're not constantly context switching um, in and out of browsers or tabs and things like that. So um, opening up uh, a, a window to that. And of course this would open in our, in our documentation website, um, but at least you have the, the quick access to it from the application. That's sort of the homepage and navigation flow so far. Uh, I'm going to stop if there's any big questions. Otherwise, I'll just keep going and we can jump into project. I have a hi. Um, I'm Amitai Stern. I'm from uh, Logs.io. I have a, a question regarding the dev tools. What what is the context that they're going to be? Um, like when you do a search, does it are they aware of like is, is the thought behind the user experience that this um, the dev tools are aware of what where I am within the application, or is it generally just available everywhere? Uh, long term, we might want to consider some additional awareness. I think uh, short term, what I noticed as I watch people do demos and as I interact with customers and as I see the way that like people are actually using the application is I notice a lot of like. Uh, work a little bit on the UI, then hop out to another tab where you have DevTools open and like you do a quick search and then you hop over to like another tab and like keep making your activity and then you might switch over. So uh, I think at launch, what we are thinking is we just make DevTools persistent uh, and you can always like make it full screen or go to the full DevTools experience. But this just allows us to bring that into wherever you may be in the application so that you can actually go ahead and contextually interact with the CLI in addition to any UI actions that you're doing. Is it, uh, is it always maintaining, let's say, if I started a search, I can like minimize this and then and I'll be in some other context and I'll 
expand the dev tools, it'll still have that same view. Right? Yeah. That's a, and that's the idea. Is, okay. Yeah. yeah so sense. It so it'll just yeah, so persist where you were. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we've also explored like tabs, multiple tabs for dev tools uh, and, and things like that, especially to, to try to keep um, your context uh, of where you've left off in, in a couple of different places. So a lot more to come on that. Um, these are just really like very early explorations of global dev tools that we're really excited about. Hi, uh, this is uh, Greg uh, Smith. I, I work for a company called SAS. Um, you know, it's interesting. I hear you refer to dev tools as, as a CLI. Uh, it's not really a CLI. It's uh, a shortcut to API calls. So in my, my use case, uh, we deploy a log monitoring solution for our users. Uh, the last thing I want them to do is get an API front end uh, because they wouldn't know what to do with it and they can only, it can only lead to d disaster. So um, I assume that would be a configurable option or something we could uh, disable because um, it only that works is, if you really know the API. Yes. <laughs> that is correct, <laughs> yes. Our, yes. Our, our intent is that uh, your dashboards admin should be able to configure like the visibility of tools and potentially even be able to surfer those depending on your role. Um, we haven't done a whole deep dive into um, how we might continue to evolve kind of like the security constructs of like dashboards. Um, so that is still ongoing work uh, that we need to untangle. Um, but uh, definitely that is something that we're keeping in consideration, um, you know, for now, we're keeping parity with the existing like security controls, um, but we definitely want to make it easier for you to be able to turn on and off the tools that are relevant for your users. Yeah, yeah I will, and... I, well, I was just going to say parity with the existing security controls, um, uh, not to be negative, is a kind of a low bar. Um, I, I think there's a lot of work to be done there to to enable features and, and disable features from a security standpoint, short of having to re rebuild the whole images. But um, yep. we'll, we'll get to that at some other point. <laughs> no, that's a it's a great call out. Um, and and I think a lot of the things that you'll see in the the look and feel changes in the UI, um, they're really intended to be configurable, show hide based on permissions or or user groups. Um, so I'm I'm really excited to say like what we've what we've kind of come up with with these persistent sticky uh, con context menus, if you will, is that they're really meant to be very customizable and flexible. Um, so uh, yeah, but I think I think that's definitely um, within the vision for sure. Dave, you have been uh, patiently waiting with your hand up. Uh, yeah, and uh, sorry, I'm just making dinner, so I'm walking around, but I was <laughs> touching on the security stuff. I just wanted to make clear that uh, none of this is so if you go to the dev tools behind the scenes, you're making API calls. So hiding or showing or making this more um, embedded into the experience is something that has nothing to do with security controls. Um, if you hide it from users, but they still have access to make those API calls, they, they will still be able to make them anyway. Um, so definitely we need to work with this uh, hand in hand and, and here, here on the security can be made better. Uh, so that's something that we take very seriously, but I just wanted to make sure that it's clear that hiding it wouldn't be you would still have permissions or not have them based on on your roles fair enough fair enough i'd like to second that and to say like in, in logs that we do i mean as you can view the dev tools in in the open source dashboards but you you could try using them but you'll get nowhere you'll get like a response saying it's not uh you're not allowed to do that well great um I think if we're good to keep going, um, have a couple other things that I'd love to show off. Um, let's jump into uh, creating a project. Um, one of the things you'll see here is a significant change in the way that we're presenting our dashboard objects. Right now, everything's tables, 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 tables. And we really wanna start to use tables for data and start to show objects in more of a memorable, referen referenceable way um, so one thing that we're doing with projects is assigning colors and themes to help people kind of like look through their massive tabs. We'll never be able to solve opening a million tabs. Everybody has their own way of working. But if we can assign some colors, it might be easier to kind of keep track of, of the different types of things you're looking at over the course of a day. Um, and this would also work hand in hand with our existing um, uh, custom branding functionalities as well. 
So there's definitely a lot of flexibility uh, here in choosing your own colors and customizing um, the, the projects to your needs visually. Um, so we're uh, definitely also trying to, and this is totally kind of a, a small aside, but like uh, in, the, in the lens of adding more context and contextual actions, uh, we're definitely leaning more on surfacing up menus that are are a lot cleaner they're not cluttering your view all of the time um available on mouse over and and some simple actions like i want to favorite this uh this project um and be able to really you're actually able to favorite really any page any object within the application um to add to that favorites list so we're going to jump into creating a project um projects are again intended to help you organize all of the features and functionalities within the application and kind of give people really uh, specific views um, and help uh, uh, create like a collaborative uh, project space. Um, so really just the basic stuff that we're introducing, uh, you give a project a name and a description, assign a color, a custom color, or one of, uh, one of the ones out of the box. Um, iconography, we're also hoping to uh, roll out some, some visual customization. So again, people tend to remember colors and pictures and names uh, a little bit uh, faster than trying to like lists and lists of table data. Um, we're also really excited about the idea of uh, attaching a visualization theme to your dashboards, um, or sorry, to your projects. Um, and we're looking into expanding our visualization themes beyond categorical. So right now, if you wanted to have a monochrome visualization theme, you actually have to sit there and pick them, pick all the monochrome colors yourself and kind of build it out that way. Uh, and um, just really excited to, to grow our um, offering there. And we wanna give projects a template um, to give everyone like a good jumping off point. And um, out of the customer conversations that we've had, we've kind of seen the ways that people slice and dice their observability or their security analytics needs. Um, and we're really excited to be growing all of our, our front end search needs as well. Um, but of course, at any point, you can customize really any of these templates. And we can also start blank with a custom template. Um, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and create an observability uh, project. And that observability project comes with uh, some preloaded features. Again, you can turn them on and off as needed and what's relevant to your project and your uh, organization. Um, and you can also add your members, your users, your user group and roles, um, and also manage their permissions here uh, right at the get go. So we're gonna go ahead and create that. Now we're gonna pretend it's been a couple of weeks. We've got some activity going on in our project. Our project is the movie uh, database uptime. Um, we've got you know a persistent project uh, description here. I can see all the members. So I know, you know who's got access to this. Do I need to take action on that anytime? That's always right here front and center and available. Um, and of course I can also customize everything that's in this view. Um, we'll have really, I'm really excited to provide like smart defaults to uh, these landing experiences. So um, as more objects are created within this project, um, they can start to be surfaced uh, onto kind of this like overview, what I'll call like an overview dashboard. Um, and then let's go ahead and uh, show a couple of other things. So one thing you may have noticed is that between the homepage experience and the project experience, the navigation has changed quite a bit. The idea behind this is to really keep you hyper-focused in the project navigation because all of our projects now contain a data explorer, a library specific to that project, as well as applications specific to the project. So you're, we've kind of flipped the paradigm from going to a feature plugin and then kind of dividing all of the use cases within that to putting it use case first, and then you can have all of your uh, features and uh, applications there specific to this project. Um, so this really keeps you nice and focused and helps you jump around um, into the project. You can always get to another, um, another project really quickly from our drop-down menu 
And then of course, we also have the persisting, uh, the same persisting quick actions bar here, totally customizable, of course, and um, definitely want to, uh, definitely want to be able to provide that um, search functionality that's contextual to uh, the, um, the view that you're on, apologies. Um, I saw a question about accessibility. So yes, uh, some of the colors that you're seeing here aren't fully baked yet. Uh, these are our uh, kind of like North Star going, um, going uh, blue gray. Um, again, to really uh, help align to our branding, but um, actually all the dark mode colors you see so far are accessibility uh, friendly and approved. Um, but we definitely like some of the icon accent colors are they're toned up for screen share specifically um, because I didn't want them to all look very muddy uh, on everyone's screens through screen share. We know there's kind of a, a quality issue there, but um, definitely you can uh, take a look into the OUI GitHub repo. Um, we have a bunch of conversations uh, going on right now about color. So I definitely uh, would love uh, any specifics that you have, uh, Joshua. Hey, this is Joshua, product manager from the Open Source Project. Uh, I'm just, I, don't, I just didn't hear if, if we were baking accessibility in as core requirements for the, the new user experience. A hundred and it looks fabulous. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, I, I apologize. I should have called that out. And actually, we should probably Kevin, um, let's I, I can add some comments in the issue uh, to address that. But yeah, um, you'll notice that uh, I'm going to jump into a dashboard really quickly. Um, you know, especially with our viz colors and expanding our viz colors, the intention there is uh, right now we provide a colorblind safe visual uh, viz color palette in OUI, which dashboards is now in the process of cutting over to. We're really excited to have like more fine grained control over that. Um, but we're trying to meet uh, AA standards out of the box rather than trying to like, uh, they're, they're definitely not an afterthought is kind of all I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's much easier to bake them at the beginning than to step them back in later. For sure. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, so I jumped really quickly ahead, apologies. But um, the next thing that we're really excited about is the concept of a library. And every project has its own library. Um, objects can be shared between projects. Um, that's something that we still have a lot to figure out. Um, but the idea is that once you create um, we really wanted to give the context of how your objects are related to your project. So for example, um, you know, your dashboard object, uh, maybe it's labeled as active because that's the one that you want um, all of your, your coworkers to take a look at. Um, maybe you should, uh, maybe we're toying with the idea of being able to like label things as archived um, for reference only or different tags that maybe uh, could be customized um, to your needs. Um, and then there's some other like more system generated tagging like this, uh, this chart, this chart visualization um, for uh, uh, European visits. Uh, it, it's on six dashboards. So that's probably a good heads up. You might not want to delete that one. Or if you make a change, it'll you know, have an impact on six other uh, dashboards. So um, being able to kind of give more clues and more insights uh, into object usage um, could really help our customers uh, keep uh, know where they have to keep consistency um, or where they have the ability to make more collaborative changes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just for, like go into our website visits uh, dashboard. Um, so we have the dashboards. All of our libraries have all of our subcategories. Um, available in the navigation or by drill down um, through our filtering or searching. And then um, what we're trying to do here, uh, so the prototype is a little bit primitive at the moment, um, but we're really excited for introducing dashboards that don't lose their context of their controls. Right now, kind of scrolls way off the page. You kind of don't have um, the further context of if you have performed a search or you started to filter um these visualizations update based on those and vice versa sometimes you can filter through the visualization and it's very easy to 
uh, get lost. So um, we also on scroll, this would reduce quite a bit. So we really want to take away as little real estate as possible um, from, from the user who's viewing a dashboard. We've also started to explore um, more fine grain controls of our visualizations and also introducing visualization sections. Um, so with uh, a lot of our projects with multiple data sources and um, connectivity uh, to, uh, excuse me, to more um, uh, query language types, I'm so sorry, I'm getting tripped up on my words. Um, sometimes they don't play very nicely with the, the DQL that we have uh, by default on the dashboard. So putting those in a visualization section um, helps us control and, and lock those visualizations um, to the filters that are relevant to those visualizations as well. Um, so for example, I might have this biz section that I actually want to uh, search within. And once I interact with it, then the then all of our toolbars appear for that visualization section. That way it's not always taking up visual space and, and interrupting the flow. Um, but you can now see that like these visualizations at the bottom um, all in theory uh, match this query for US visits. Um, a couple of like quick nods to some of our current experience. Um, we'll still, we'll, we're going to retain a lot of the interactivity we have with our visualizations. And then on the container itself, be able to provide um, more fine grained tools, such as like adding uh, alerts and anomaly detectors, uh, filtering, turning on and off layers, and then customizing the visualization if you have the permission to do so, of course, um, turning on and off legends, uh, kind of cleaning that up uh, quite a bit. Um, and, and bringing everything together for, for more control. Um, I think that kind of goes over all the screens I prepared for today. Uh, definitely went <laughs> very quickly through a lot of that. So I'm happy to take any more questions. Uh, I was gonna ask about, um, so when you do, when you hover over, when you do the, the mouse over um, some of the, um, visualizations in dashboards, then you could sort of uh, filter by them. And in mm -hmm. this case, it would be according to the context um, of the whole. Like if I filter in unique visitors versus average bytes, for example, if I filter over there, it's going to be added to the top tier of all the filters of that section. Or is it just going to be on that one visualization? So I think we're going to retain, uh, that's a really good question. Um, I think we would retain the functionality we have today, which would be everything, but then allow, like, I think we need to introduce the option to do what you're asking um, of like, just filter this one visualization. And the, the term we've been using is a locked visualization. So it's possible that a section can be locked or the whole dashboard can be locked into a filter or a search. And then we really, I, I do think we need to start getting into like just locking a single visualization by a filter. Um, so it's something that we have a lot of exploration uh, to do on. And actually this is, I'll, I'll plug this now. Um, we are recruiting for testing um, our new look and feel as well as our new functionality. So um, there will be a link in the notes for here for this meeting as well as in our github to sign up for that testing because i would love to have a lot more of um like expand on a lot of those like feature fine grain tools that we want to to start creating for for visualizations thanks yeah, yeah. to kind of piggyback off of that one a little bit um a, a consistent feedback that we have been hearing is we want to be able to set a specific time range on a visualization independently of the global dashboard we want to be able to do that in a section we want to be able to like filter specifically so we're trying to figure out what is the best way to surface like both individual visualization controls versus global and how to handle those different interactions um and uh so I'll definitely reinforce, uh, please sign up and talk to us. Krish will be more than delighted to dive deeper into like the expectations for those interactions um, so that we Very can make sure that like we're really improving this for, for all of you. 
Yeah, and we, I, one of the most exciting pieces I think we have um, for our biz controls is expanding the ability to have uh, features and applications register themselves to our, like what I'll call the future is called biz container <laughs> um, and building out a biz container that's really scalable um, and customizable. I'm, I'm really excited about that. So would love to chat with anybody uh, for sure and get more information about use cases and needs. Um, I also think um, we're, we are exploring the, these new dark mode colors. We are exploring for the current reality. Um, so uh, I definitely invite anyone who has concerns or questions about the dark mode um, to follow along in the OUI repo. And we're posting screenshots. And I can, I can add, it's all an experiment right now. <laughs> um, so as we experiment with all of the, the changes, um and verify the the color path that we're taking um you can definitely follow along with screenshots and i i'm hoping that we will be able to get this into um playground also for previews and feedback um so uh i i'll i'll add a link um i'll send chris and dave i'll, I'll send you guys the link to that um that github issue for people to follow along on to I see a raised hand from David. Yeah. yeah. Hi, everyone. By the way, David, developer advocate from AWS. Um, one of the things I was going to ask about is the flyouts. Are we going to be limiting the number of flyouts that can be stacked such that there aren't flyouts stacked on top of each other? That's a great question. Um, we are refining our flyout pattern that we currently have. Um, you'll see that some. The flyouts that I showed today that are relevant to the navigation are coming from the left. And that is because of a couple of things. Um, <laughs> it's because we want to preserve the ability to have the flyout from the right. Um, the flyout from the right is, and this is a design system thing that a uh, guys piece that I am working on. Um, the flyout from the right is really intended for uh, diving into deeper information. Um, so those patterns, we're sort of taking a look at whether they should be push or always overlay, or like if it's a case by case basis and, and providing a little bit more guidance to our builders around that. Um, and there also is a, a little bit of a movement towards quick creating objects. Like, uh, you'll, I think, um, the community has seen the, um, anomaly detection creation flow. Um, where that also happens in the flyout, there's a lot of like fine grain controls that we might start moving to flyouts. Um, we have a lot of testing to do on the use of the left flyout versus the use of the right flyout. Um, there are some cases that are arising where it would be nice to be able to have your documentation on the left while you work over to the right, and you might end up clicking into something that gives you additional information. So. Um, I think it's something that like exploring the edges of right now, um, but that's a really great question. We definitely are never going to stack. I will tell you, we'll never stack them side by side. Um, that's like a, a no, no zone. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that, but I think that's really interesting. Uh, one other question this is probably more of an implementation detail than anything else. Um, are we going to be, so will that these uh, projects live as objects and, you know, especially for the templates, will that be like customizable such that, you know, maybe uh, admins can, you know, set, hey, these are our templates for our org. The way that I'm thinking about templates is a way to accelerate your uh, creation. Um, and uh a builder can provide a template as part of the application that they're registering. So for example, uh, the builders of the observability experience might say, this is what an observability template looks like. Uh, but we also recognize that uh, if you are an org admin, or if you are like somebody that has a lot of users that have very specific needs, that you might actually want to create like custom templates um, that you just want to pre -camp. And so ideally, like as a builder, you can register a template, uh, but also as an admin, you should be able to like save a, save uh, 
the settings as a template um, so that you can reuse it or referencing or reference it at a later time. And that would basically uh, just remember like the feature selection and like the permissions um, so that you can very quickly like start off another project uh, from a similar like uh, feature set. Trying to make space for other people to ask questions, but I still have more questions. <laughs> Uh, just just one one more small one. Uh, I mean, we talked about how this is, you know, in the works at the moment. Like, what is? I, I maybe I missed it. Is, what is the release horizon for this? And uh, one's kind of like, is it three zero or is it four zero or yeah? What does that look some like? Some of some of the approach that we're taking is as we find concepts within the North Star that we really like. Some of them we can iterate into with the current. Uh, 2.x line with the current OUI um, component library as well. So you might see us cherry pick ideas from here. Um, Kevin, I think you can probably speak to some of the more like Kevin and Dagny can speak to the feature pieces of it. Yeah, um, some of the changes here are definitely a, a 3.0 breaking change uh, to, to fully realize the vision. Uh, but there's a lot of, uh, for example, there's a lot of improvements to our dashboarding features that we could deliver incrementally. Um, there's uh, uh, a lot of the theme changes. Um, you know, we can definitely deliver like updated color palettes and and better theming and nicer typography and some things along those lines. So it's it's really uh, a matter of balancing resources and time and making sure that we're being really mindful about introducing new features if by any chance there's any risk to them right so you know features that require migration or features that require like a different mental model or a different paradigm we might be a little bit more careful about them and then there's a, a slew of other features that i think we can start delivering incrementally so that we can start moving in this direction um, over time Awfully quiet. I feel like everyone's just in the state that I'm in. That's like, this is, this is really a lot. It's, it's uh, awesome. Um, so w for future people who might be watching this recorded, hi guys, uh, where can people go to leave feedback to get, you know, kind of their word and make sure their use case is minded for this? There is a GitHub issue, um, which I will, is it okay if I post it in the chat now? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so there is the GitHub issue that Kevin has posted the future vision for dashboards. Um, there's also a related uh, one from engineering. Um, they're both pinned to uh, the dashboards repo as well. Um, so I'll add these here. Um, feel free to give feedback here as well as again, we're, we're recruiting for testing as much as possible, give previews along the way to get feedback, um, especially on some of the bigger riskier changes like our dark mode changes and and things like that and our, our charting uh visualization uh color palette changes and all sorts of things um so please sign up uh uh to be one of our testers that we can reach out to and um yeah i'm really excited for that let me see if i have that link handy too because i i'll put that in the chat as well There we so, go. Since somebody mentioned uh, 3.x, uh, is there a rough timeline for when that is due out? I'm going to defer to the project roadmap. Let me pull that up while we are talking and see if we had anything penciled for that. I don't know of anything at the moment, though. I don't think we do. I think currently any 3.x changes if if we have a significantly large number of breaking changes that we need to bundle together, then I think we'll think about whether it makes sense to uh, do a major. Uh, but we're trying as much as possible to be incremental. Yeah, so at the moment, it looks like we've got it sitting behind the 2.10 release. Um, but I don't think that's a set in stone thing. I think that is just a, a placeholder um, as as we are working on all of these things. Greg, do you have uh, 
does your question come from an area of are you looking for a 3x or wanting to hold off on 3x oh well to be honest both i mean so from a from a selfish standpoint you know we're doing our planning for you know the rest of the year trying to understand what's coming down uh the road what changes underneath us you know from that perspective i'd like to see no changes or you know bug fixes and and, and that type of stuff but nothing significant on the other hand this stuff looks great um it, you know it, it's very very attractive it'd be a lot of fun to play with uh so i'm eager to see it get out there um you know there's and then there's other functional changes that i assume will be there in three that you know would also be worth getting to just just trying to really get an idea from planning purposes um if it, if a date for three has started to uh, uh, appear out of the mist, if you will. Um, so um, sounds like it's probably not till next year. It, it seems to be. What is impression. it that you're, what is, when, when we're using Semver, which means that we're not changing our major version unless we break something and we're trying as hard as we can to add features that are backwards compatible. That means that we should be, you know, if, if we were on the two line, um, and we added, you know, significant new features. Um, five years from now, we could still be on the two line. Um, when you say you're waiting for three, is it that you're waiting for features, or is that you want you're waiting for something that is particularly like a breaking change? Um, I guess in terms of wanting it, it it's the more attractive stuff. I, I, we were just said, we were just told that that some of that would have to wait to three, and so if we want some of that, that that's where that's coming from. Um, in terms of some of the other stuff um you know we're still carrying a lot of baggage if you will from historical stuff um uh, within open search dashboards you know resizing columns within the discover view you know kind of a a basic functionality it hasn't materialized I, i'm assuming it will at some point um I, i'm wondering if that's something that gets pushed off because oh that's going to require a major rewrite of the discover interface therefore that's going to be a three dot x kind of thing you know just those kinds of things, I think, um, yeah, I, I think that's sort of kind of where I'm coming from, just trying to understand incremental changes are good. And, and you're right, if you can do everything without breaking changes, uh, that's that's good for everyone. But if we know there's a big breaking change coming at some point, knowing when it's gonna come is always good for planning purposes. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Actually, Bill, this might be a good question for you. Do we have a place where we're kind of collecting these breaking changes that we anticipate we'll need to make that would push us to a three? Um, there's whenever we make a PR into the three. So when we develop and we develop in the open source, we push all of our changes to like a three line and then we backport everything to two. But some things we don't backport if we consider them to be breaking. Um, with mm -hmm. dashboards, the definition of breaking is a little fuzzy <clears throat> because as dashboards progresses, um, we haven't <clears throat> defined an interface that we consider to be stable that could be breakable. As in, we're all, we're always progressing our plugins along with our dashboard. So, if you think of the plugin as rely as, of a dashboard plugin as relying on dashboards, we actually are all constantly breaking the interface. But we don't think of it like that. We think of the plugins and dashboards as like one big unit. And so, it's not like whoever said. Um, this won't come until three. I don't, I don't know. I don't think that there's a consensus that that actually is the way that future like major changes are envisioned. Um, yeah. And I would. I also feel like, for example, when Greg says he wants to see flexible columns, even if those flexible columns cause a lot of disruption and say like a lot of components have to be modified to deal with that, that, that still doesn't necessarily classify it as a breaking change. It just means that we'd have to figure out a way to do that so that nothing that depends on it Will break and I and I think the only dependencies that that really are out there for dashboards would be like maybe external plugins, like plugins that are not part of this repository, or um, maybe people who embed dashboards into other applications and rely on the interfaces that we make available to do that. Um, but uh, that this is really an open question. Yeah. Fair point. Actually, thanks, Dave, as well. Uh, just dropped a meta issue that has uh, breaking changes for 3.0, uh, which looks like it's a tracker, uh, actually, that Andrew created. Thank you, Andrew, of course, um, for putting that out there. Yeah. And um, Sean mentioned that we have a um, like a tight coupling between dashboards and open search engine. 
but we're actively working on on decoupling those. So um, in a later in a, in an upcoming version of dashboards, people should be able to access a different version of their cluster from that dashboard. Um, and yeah. from then on, our plan is to keep the dashboards able to be backwards compatible. And maybe the day that the engine, the core goes to three, you wouldn't really up your dashboard version. It would still be on the two line. Yeah, that idea of, of decoupling open search dashboards from open search, I think it's an interesting one. Um, uh, I think you run into a naming issue. Um, also at that point, open search dashboards, you know, uh, I suspect there was mixed feelings about that as a name, but it, as you decouple from the back end, I, I think that becomes, I think you're you're back into a naming uh, problem again. But uh, that's a that's a really good point, and it's something that we haven't thought about yet. Dave, I think just once dashboards. <laughs> I'm just putting an RFC out there with my proposal for the name change. Uh, but uh, one one question is perhaps. Uh, as much as we're tracking the uh, the the breaking changes, and we're still talking about the we don't have well defined what breaking means for dashboards. Perhaps that's a good RFC or discussion to create and just bring people on and say like you know what are the things that we're calling because at the end of the day this is a contract of sorts with our community, and we need to clearly know when we're breaking it and when we're not breaking it. And if that is not super clear, maybe that's a good RFC to to put out there. And if nobody wants to take it from me or knows that one is already created, I'm happy to stub one out and, and create it. Dave, that's a, that's a really good call out, especially um, I do know that that as a, as a group of maintainers, we have been a little shy of making what we would consider significant changes uh, because we don't know whether that's going to be considered a breaking change by our partners and by our community. Uh, so having that conversation in the open and understanding more of like what the community would consider a breaking change, I think would be a really healthy discussion to be able to have. I think uh, regarding breaking changes, uh, the, the general thing that's definitely breaking is of course you have an API and uh, open search uh, core changed a name, uh, the, the wording of the API. And so it's breaking API, breaking change. Um, but decoupling, as I see it, would be decoupling the user experience from the whole layer that you know communicates with the, the core. That would probably be the decoupling. And in that case, then you'd have um, no problem with breaking changes. But in terms of APIs, there's nothing really to do. I mean, you're trying to reach the uh, uh, in in version two. Uh, I think there's an option, but in version three, some of the nodes' names have changed, so you, you just can't reach them. There's really no way to around that. I just wanted to go back a little bit as, as well, just to clarify that um, the biggest source of what Kevin described is kind of like over indexing on avoiding breaking things is the fact that the plugin interfaces for open search dashboard plugins, um, there's not a great distinction between uh, what what you actually can do as a dashboards plugin versus what you um, like what we would consider as like the best practices of interfaces to use. Um, open search dashboard plugins today have a lot of leeway to use things which probably should be internal and, and private. And so that was also part of the the idea of, of better defining a SDK and extension system for, for dashboards that is a more controlled set of things. Um, because for instance, today, if you're a, a dashboard plugin and you uh, also, you can directly depend on any dependency that dashboards declares. And then if we version bump to a break and change, you kind of get pulled along regardless of, of kind of what the impact is. So there, I think that's where we also the, the kind of extensions project um, would help with that because it clarifies for extending dashboards what are the safe things that you can really depend on and what things are user your own risk. All right, so I'm going to jump in real quick because we are coming up to time. Um, number one, thank you everyone for this discussion. This has been huge and um, thanks so much, Krush, Kevin, and, and the entire UX group um, for all the work you put in on this. This is awesome. Um, 
With that, I'm going to close the meeting. If there is anyone who would like to hang around for open Q&A, I will hang out afterwards. I think Krush and Kevin may also, uh, they're available. Um, so thank you. <laughs> and have a good day. And with that, I will open Q&A back up uh, for anyone who wishes to ask questions. <laughs> also, I know there is a fair bit of work that's being done in the extensibility space as far as declaring that interface that was mentioned earlier, which that's one of the areas I'm really looking forward to seeing some progress as well, just because I think that once we have something that is like a, a set of APIs and SDKs, uh, then we can actually know what pay hey, we're breaking that contract that we've made. Thanks, everybody. And I think I need to drop for another call in a couple of minutes, but um, really appreciate everybody's feedback. Thank you. Mm -hmm.